The movie begins by showing a scene where human beings live alongside a race of monsters in the social order. But one day, the human race thought that their race was far superior to the monster race, decided to expel the entire monster race from their territory, and created a barrier between the human world and the monster world. Even though the monster race had put up a fight, the human race still managed to defeat the monster race and banish them to a remote area in the Rocky Mountain area. A few years later, when humanity lived in peace under the rule of the Qing Dynasty, a great coup d'etat occurred in the world of monsters. A group of traitorous monsters rebelled against the King of Monsters, who led the world of monsters and usurped the position of the king. In that great battle, the monster king was killed, while the monster queen escaped into the forest with several bodyguards. Unfortunately, the rebel king and his followers continue to hunt down the entire family of the monster king so that no one can usurp his throne. Unbeknownst to many, the monster queen was pregnant with a boy who was predicted to resolve the conflict between the human and monster races. One day, a huge monster who is a follower of the rebel king is chasing the monster queen, and her two bodyguards, a husband and wife monster couple, suddenly appear and help save the monster queen. The monster husband named Zhu Gao and the monster wife named Fan Ying are monster members who are still loyal to the original monster king, so they are willing to help the monster queen. After an epic battle and cooperation, they were finally able to trap the huge monster in a tree so they could escape. Sometime later, in a village called Yangning, a young man named Tianian, the village leader, tries to break up a fight between two old women, Li and Mo. Tianian was used to the same chaos in the village as the villagers used to fight almost every day over trivial things like fighting over clothes. Even his best friend, Xiao Wu, often gets affected by these fights and has to help Tianian sew the clothes of the residents who are often torn. Every day, Tianian lifts with his grandmother, Jin, to take care of the village since his father, Da Tian, and his grandfather, Zhen Jiang, disappeared from the village. Besides being used to the residents' fights, Tianian was familiar with Grandma Jin's strange behavior, who often set traps around their house. The entire Tianian family has passed down the talent for Kung Fu martial arts because the Tianian family has been monster hunting officials since the first generation. Unfortunately, Tianian was the only descendant with no Kung Fu talent and could only do domestic activities such as cooking and sewing. Realizing that he had different talents from his father and his grandfather, Grandma Jin always asked him to practice using a rusty sword that was claimed to be a monster-killing magic sword. After showing Tianian some sword techniques, Grandma Jin left the house to look for her son, Tianian's father, who is still missing to this day. Tianian couldn't help but stare at his grandmother, who still insisted on finding someone who had abandoned him. Meanwhile, in the royal palace area in the center of the city, many people came to an office called the Monster Hunter Bureau. The only people accepted into the bureau were talented people with good martial arts or swordsmanship skills. Each hunter in the bureau is divided into five levels ranging from beginner level alias level 1 to the highest level alias level 5. The head of the Monster Hunter Bureau, Geikianu, tasked all bureau members to capture the baby of the Monster King so that the monster world became chaotic and all monsters wandered all over the place in search of new dwellings. Thus, the monster hunters will have the opportunity to get many monsters that they have rarely found anywhere. Back to Tianian, fetching water in a river, he accidentally met a husband and wife with very strange behavior. The woman briefly smelled his body, making her husband feel very jealous. Tianian invited them to lunch at the noodle restaurant he had been managing on the edge of the village. Shortly after they arrived at the Tianian Tavern, a foreign girl suddenly appeared in the tavern and ordered a very unnatural menu. The girl named Huo Xiaolan orders him human liver meat to make the husband and wife couple feel surprised. Tianian, who heard the order, only took those words as a joke and gave a ridiculous answer. The situation turned tense when Xiaolan started to attack the husband and wife, and they were thrown to the floor. Tianian, confused by the incident, was shocked when the husband and wife revealed their disguises in front of him. As it turned out, the husband and wife were a monster couple who had once helped the monster queen, Zhu Gao, and Fan Ying. Xiao Long could tell the pair were monsters in disguise because she was a tier 2 monster hunter. Zhu Gao and Fan Ying had a small fight and blamed each other for their exposed disguises, but he could calm her down with one romantic kiss. The amused Xiao Long again attacked them, creating a big mess in the Tianian Tavern. During that fight, the monster queen suddenly approached Tianian who was under the table. When another hunter named Luo Gong appeared in the tavern, he immediately snared Zhu Gao and Fan Ying into a net. Shortly after, the monster queen showed herself while pointing a stick at Tianian so she could escape from that place. But before the queen of monsters ran away, she spat at him, which made him startle and try to wipe away the saliva. After Lu Wogong managed to snatch Xiao Lan's bounty, she decided to stay at Tianian's house. At night, Tianian expects to have fun with Xiao Lan, but instead, he has to sleep with his hands and feet tied, so he can't do anything with her. On the other hand, Zhu Gao and Fan Ying, still chained by Lu Wogong in a cave, began singing a strange song that could lead other monsters to that place. Lu Wogong, immersed in the music, didn't realize that many small monsters had come to save them. 
After successfully breaking free and knocking Luo Gong out of the way, Zhu Gao and the others started rushing to search for the Monster Queen. On the other hand, the Monster Queen kidnaps Tianyan, who is bound, and brings him into the forest. She begs Tianyan to help her save her baby because she is currently dying. Before he could respond, the Monster Queen had already stuffed her baby egg into his mouth. Shortly after, a giant monster following the Rebel King came and intended to attack them. Fortunately, Xiao Lan came just in time and helped Tianyan to escape from the place even though they had to leave the Monster Queen, who couldn't hold on anymore. From that day on, Xiao Lan and Tianyan began to work together to care for and raise the baby monster like their own. Xiao Lan's purpose in taking care of the baby was to sell the baby monster to the Bureau, and Tianyan was forced to agree to it because he wanted the baby to get out of his body as soon as possible. After all the adventures that Tianyan had done outside the village, he returned to the village and found something odd because the atmosphere had turned quiet. Even when he visits Xiao Wu's house, he is surprised when he finds a monster claiming to be Xiao Wu. On the following night, Tianyan realized that the village he had been living in all along was a village belonging to the monsters, and at this time, all the village monsters had been captured by Ge Qianhu and his followers. Xiao Lan and Tianyan could only hide without being able to do anything to save the monsters. That night, all the houses in the village were burned down by the Monster Hunting Bureau, forcing them to leave the village. The next day, Xiao Lan and Tianyan traveled to the mountainous region while waiting for the baby monster to be born. When they stopped at a tavern for lunch, Xiao Lan accidentally saw Luo Gong, who had also come to the village. In the end, Luo Gong found out that Tianyan was pregnant with the descendant of the Monster King, so he immediately tried to snatch the baby away. In Xiao Lan and Tianyan's fight against Luo Gong, a giant monster following the Rebel King suddenly appeared and attacked them. Luckily with a little trick, Xiao Lan could make Luo Gong fight the monster while she and Tianyan went to escape from the place. The next day when they arrived at an inn, they did not notice that Fan Ying and Zhu Gao, who had disguised themselves as humans, were secretly watching them. When Tianyan was resting alone in the room, Xiao Lan met a rich married couple named Zheng Lao and Ying Ying, who told them about a restaurant with a special menu called Restaurant Heaven. The restaurant provided a menu that could increase a person's fertility, and they planned to go there because they had wanted offspring for a long time. When Xiao Lan returned to the room, she found that Tianyan had almost been kidnapped by Fan Ying and Zhu Gao. Fortunately, she could stop them and safely bring him back to their room. Shortly after, Tianyan began to experience violent contractions, and Xiao Lan immediately rushed to prepare all the equipment she had to get the baby out. Ying Ying, who happened to hear a commotion in Xiao Lan's room, immediately entered the room after seeing that someone was about to give birth. As a result, Ying Ying finds out that Tianyan, a boy, is giving birth to a baby, and the baby is a monster. Xiao Lan, who doesn't want their secret to be known by many people, decides to knock Ying Ying out so they can hide the baby monster. Although they had a problem after that because the innkeeper's son was playing with the baby monster, they were able to overcome the mess. On the other hand, Zhu Gao and Fan Ying managed to get rid of Xiao Lan after Grandma Jin saved them secretly. The next day, Xiao Lan and Tianyan had to give extra care to the baby monster because the baby had a high fever. This incident made them act like parents to the baby and strengthened their relationship as a family. Meanwhile, Ying Ying and Zheng Lao bump into Lu Gong on their way to Heaven's restaurant and decide to take him with them after learning that Lu Gong is a monster hunter. Back to Xiao Lan and Tianyan, who continue to care for and educate the baby monster so that the baby does not eat living things. When Tianyan finds out that Xiao Lan is still determined to sell the baby, he becomes very sad and asks her to reconsider her decision. The next day when Xiao Lan and Tianyan arrived at Sun Tian City, where Heaven's Restaurant was located, they immediately went to see a female monster distributor to sell the baby monster. Even though Tianyan felt very heavy at Xiao Lan's decision, he couldn't stop her because he had promised her about it. The baby monster could only cry when he was locked in a cage and saw the two people who had cared for him all this time leave him. The next day, when Xiao Lan and Tianyan found a cloth carving made by a baby monster, they realized that the baby had considered them his parents. At that moment, they regretted their decision and realized they had made a big mistake. They immediately rushed to the monster distributor to take the baby monster back. Unfortunately, the woman who owned it said that the baby monster had been bought by a restaurant called Heaven's Restaurant. The scene shifts to Heaven's Restaurant, where the chefs have prepared a hot oil pan to cook the baby monster they just got. But unlike the monsters they had been cooking so far, the baby monster was not burned by the hot oil, which made the chefs feel astonished. At the same time, Zhu Gao and Fan Ying came to the restaurant and watched the nobles waiting in line to eat the monster meat dish rumored to increase fertility. They also saw Ying Ying and Zheng Lao present at the restaurant with their new bodyguard, Luo Gong. Zhu Gao and Fan Ying were surprised by the appearance of the person who had caught them both. But fortunately, Luo Gong didn't realize they were monsters disguised as humans. On the other hand, Xiao Lan and Tianyan had managed to break into Heaven's restaurant through the secret door at the back of the restaurant. 
Meanwhile, the restaurant chefs are still confused because the baby monster they want to serve as the main dish for the nobles has a very strong physique. The baby monster was completely unharmed, even after he was fried in hot oil, steamed, or boiled at high temperatures. After failing to do anything to kill the baby monster, the frustrated chefs decided to serve the baby monster alive to the nobles. Shortly after, Tianyin and Xiao Lan arrived at the restaurant warehouse and found that all the monsters from Yangning village had also been sold to the restaurant. Tianyin was determined to save all the monsters in that place, even though they had to fight against a very strong monster hunter in the end. Fortunately, thanks to their epic cooperation, they defeated the hunter and freed all the monsters from their captivity. On the other hand, Zhu Gao and Fan Ying were trying to save the baby monster being delivered in the elevator. Unfortunately, Luo Gong figured out their disguise and immediately chased them into the elevator. The tense battle between Luo Gong and the two monsters was epic, they had to fight in a narrow room. Fortunately, Zhu Gao and Fan Ying again defeated Luo Gong and made him fall to the ground floor. Surprisingly, when Luo Gong nearly died when he got into the crashed machine, they decided to save him. The rescue incident touched his heart, and he said he wanted to help them defeat the other monster hunters. When Tianyin and Xiao Lan were looking for the baby monster, they accidentally met Grandma Jin, who was still offering Tianyin the rusty sword she always carried. After that, they rushed to find the baby monster that had been served on the dining table and was ready to be slashed by a deadly insect. One of the monster hunting nobles claimed that the insect could cut through anything, even hard objects like rocks. Fortunately, Xiao Lan and Tianyin arrived just in time and managed to free the baby monster from its captivity. Sadly, Xiao Lan and Granny Jin, who tried to stop the monster hunter, were caught by Ge Qianhu while Tianyin was still hiding with the baby monster. Tianyin, who realized that they had been cornered, began to act by firing fruit bullets using the mouth of the baby monster. Shortly after Ge Qianhu was hit by the fruit shot, he started acting strange and showing his true self. It turned out that all this time, he was a monster disguised as a human by using hundreds of layers to cover his real identity. Not only that, Ge Qianhu was the rebellious king who had previously massacred the monster king's family to gain the king's throne in the monster world. So far, he has raised propaganda to capture the baby monster, a descendant of the monster king, so that he can get rid of the threat that could seize his throne. Just as the monster hunters began to struggle to defeat the monster king, Tianyin bravely tried to defeat the monster with his rusty sword. Unfortunately, the monster was able to blow him away and throw the sword right into his chest. The baby monster, who saw it, tried to pull the sword from Tianyin's body, making his tiny hands bleed. Miraculously, the blood from the baby monster could turn the rusty sword into a sharp sword as if it had just been sharpened. Shortly after the sword changed, Tianyin suddenly rose again and directly attacked the rebellious king with the sword. With a special move passed down by his family, Tianyin finally managed to kill the traitorous monster and Luo Gong, who managed to capture the monster hunters. After the battle ended, Grandma Jin gave Tianyin a coin necklace to sign that he was worthy of becoming a monster hunter. The next day, Tianyin and Xiao Lan were forced to part with the baby monster they had cared for all this time because the monsters of Yangning village would take care of the baby. He had to do that for the safety of the baby monster, even when he felt a heavy heart to part with the baby because he considered him as his own son. Before having a heartwarming farewell, he named the baby monster Wu Ba. After parting ways with Wu Ba, Tianyin and Xiao Lan will continue their journey to eradicate evil monsters and find Tianyin's father. Tianyin still wanted to unravel the mystery behind his father, who had left him in the village of monsters without giving any explanation. Meanwhile, Wu Ba will live a comfortable life with the demons who are still loyal to the Monster King, and they dedicate their lives to guarding Wu Ba. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, that when we realize something much more valuable that matters the most in our lives, we will find the true purpose of life and have a much more meaningful life.